it's not in every case we have a base made of an orthogonal set of vectors. To convert a base to one with an orthogonal set of vectors, we go through a process known as Gram-Schmidt. Let's see how it works. Say we have a base made of only one vector u1. This base is already an orthogonal base. So we can say the resulting orthogonal vector is v1 which is equals u1. Now, say we have another base which is made of two vectors u1 and u2 which aren't orthogonal. We shall make use of the orthogonal projection to obtain a vector orthogonal to u1 such that that vector and u1 will form an orthogonal base. So we have the orthogonal projection of u2 on u1 which is actually perpendicular or orthogonal to u1. Now, the orthogonal projection of, of y on a subspace u is equals y dot u divided by u dot u times u. Now, to obtain this new base or this new vector v2 from u2, we can make use of the fact that u2 minus the orthogonal projection of u2 on v1 is perpendicular to u1. We have here this vector which is perpendicular to this and which represents u2 minus projection of u2 on v1. Note that v1 is equals u1. So it's actually projection of u2 on u1. And using this formula, we have that v2, which is going to be this vector, is equals u2 minus u2 dot v1 divided by v1 dot v1 times v1. And that's because we've applied this formula where y is equals u2 and u is equals v1. That's basically how we've converted this base made of two vectors u1 and u2 which initially were not orthogonal to a base made of u1 and v2 which is now an orthogonal base. Also suppose that we have three vectors u1, u2 and u3. The projection of u3 on v2 gives rise to a vector which is perpendicular to v2 and the projection of u3 on v1 gives rise to a vector which is perpendicular to v1 which is actually equals u1. The resultant of these two vectors gives rise to a vector which is somewhere around here and this vector is perpendicular to both u1 and u2. This vector which is somewhere in the middle which is this white line is given as u3 minus the projection or minus the sum of these two projections. So we have this projection and this projection which are added together and we have u3 minus the sum of the two projections which is around this point giving us this new vector. So we have this. And this, as we saw, is actually perpendicular to u1 and v2. Similarly, also applying the formula we saw from here, we have that v3 is equals u3 minus the sum of these two projections. That is, we have the projection of u3 on v1 plus the projection of u3 on v2. And that's how we have this new equation. From here we have that v3 is equals u3 minus u3 dot v1 divided by v1 dot v1 v1 plus u3 dot v2 divided by v2 dot v2 v2. Rearranging our sketch we can have this and then this. So this represents v2, v3 and u1 where this v2 is parallel to this vector so actually it's the same vector but the only difference is this point of the vector is at the origin and same for v3 which is parallel to this resultant vector and with this we have 
an orthogonal base made of vectors u1 which is equals v1 v2 and v3 notice the recurrence as we keep adding the number of vectors if we leave from three vectors to four vectors we are going to be having v4 equals u4 minus the projection of u4 on v1 plus the projection of u4 on v2 plus the projection of u4 on v3 and so on and so forth so with this we can have a generalized formula where we have vn equals vn minus the projection of un on v1 plus the projection of un on v2 to the projection of un on vn minus 1. This process is known as the Graham Schmidt process. So our resultant base, as we saw, was going to be this one, where all these vectors are orthogonal to each other. Let's take an example. Say we have this base and we want to orthogonalize it. We have that B1 is going to be equals sub B1, that small B1. This small B1 is this first vector. So actually, its resultant orthogonal vector is this B1. Then, when we go to two vectors, we're going to be having B2 equals B2 minus the projection of B2, that is, this is B2 minus the projection of b2 on u1 or on b1 in this case so that's why we have b2 minus b2 dot b1 divided by b1 dot b1 times b1 which is just application of the formula we had and applying this we have b2 which is this minus b2 which is this dot b1 which is this since this is equals b1 divided by b1 dot b1 times b1 solving this we obtain this minus 6 times 2 12 plus 6 plus 36 minus 6 divided by 4 plus 4 plus 16 plus 4 and times this vector we have now these vectors so we have this minus this other vector and leading us to this vector so our b2 is actually equals this now let's go ahead to find b3 for b3 we have b3 minus the projection of b3 on b1 plus the projection of b3 on this b2 leading to b3 equals simply replacing this b3 minus b3 dot b1 which is this divided by b1 dot b1 which is this we had this b1 from here and b1 was equal to this initial b1 so we have this that itself and then we have multiplied by b1 plus b3 dot b2 b2 was gotten from here and we have it here divided by b2 dot b2 times b2 and with this we have this new and then we have this final answer given us b3 equals this now with this we have an orthogonal base made of b1 b2 and b3 where these three vectors this this and this are all orthogonal to each other let's see how to convert this orthogonal base to an orthonormal base to do this we simply divide each of the vectors which make up the orthogonal base by their magnitude and so we have this b1 divided by the magnitude of b1 giving us this which is equals 0 0.189 b1 then we have b2 prime which is equals b2 divided by the magnitude of b2 which is equals b2 divided by the magnitude of this vector and this leads to 0 0.137 b2 then b3 prime equals b3 divided by the magnitude of b3 which is the magnitude of this vector which is equals b3 divided by this magnitude and this gives us 0 0.106 b3 so we'll multiply each element in b3 by 0 0.106 you can take it as an exercise 
to find the dot product of B1, B2, B1, B3, and B2, B3 and confirm that it always gives zero. And also that the magnitude of these new vectors formed is equals one. For our in-class exercise, let's autonormalize U, where U is made of these two vectors. That is, we shall find the orthogonal base made of two vectors, say U, big U1 and big U2 from these two vectors, and then find the orthonormal corresponding vectors big U1 prime and big U2 prime. So feel free to pause and see on the correction. The orthogonal base can be given as such. So if you go through the gram schmidt orthogonal process, you should be able to have this. And then its orthonormal is or the orthonormal base from gotten from this base V should be equals this. With this we drew with the subsection on gram schmidt orthogonalization and if you're given a base, you should be able to find its orthogonal correspondence.